Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 59th episode of the Exploring Antinatalism podcast, a podcast all about the subject of antinatalism created by antinatalists. My name is Amanda Oldfans-Suganik, formerly known as Forever Wolf Films on YouTube, and today I'm speaking with the director of the new award-winning film, also known as About Antinatalism, the first film from Japan with an antinatalist theme, Wataro Shibata. はい、それでは始めます。今日教授ですが、親族の不幸で急に休みを取ることになったので、え、中途で の説明をすることによって、え、分析を助けたいと思います。反出生主義とは人間の繁殖行為、つまり出生を悪いものであると捉え、子供を産むのをやめようと進める考え方です。そして出生を悪と断定する主な理由として、人生は苦悩に溢
Absolutely. Yeah. The, 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 the reasons that lead somebody to antinatalism are yeah. almost infinite. There's so many different reasons and mm -hmm. it's always very interesting to hear where people are, are, are coming from and how they define it. So thank you so much for that. Um, over the last two or three years, there absolutely has been a major increase in people uh, working with the subject of antinatalism in Japan. And that's taken several forms so far. Uh, Professor uh, Masahiro Morioka is a famous philosopher who's written extensively about antinatalism. He has himself is not an antinatalist, but he's very passionate about the subject. Um, antinatalism has become the subject of several popular fictional books uh, from authors such as Yu Shinada and um, Miyako Ka uh, Kawakami. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And there's also the, a okay, thank you. And there's also the AAPJ, the Association of Anti-Procreationism in Japan, which is Japan's first antinatalist activist group. Um, are you familiar at all with any of these recent developments? And either way, do you have any thoughts about uh, any of them or all of them? Uh, to be honest, I don't know so much about them, but so I can be wrong, but I think many recent movements focus too much on philosophical aspects of the idea. So I think it is better to talk about technical and practical aspects also. So for example, maybe they can ask themselves how they can technically assist antinatalist people not to have a child. Yes, absolutely. And I, you know, in your film, uh, there was a, a bit in there where one of the characters says something to the effect of, you know, in this country, you don't even have the right not to have a child. And I thought that was such an important point that, you know, in, in not just Japan, but in many countries mm -hmm. in the world, you know, there, it, everything has been set up so that you don't have mm -hmm. access to prop, uh, proper care. Like the example mm -hmm. of vasectomy in Japan, here, you know, abortion has just, been, you know, is, is about to be, um, you know, made illegal. Um, so I think that that's an excellent point. And it, it's something that I think is very controversial that, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of antinatalists who want it to be, who want to stick with it being a philosophical discussion, but the practical yeah. discussion is extremely important. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I agree with you there. Absolutely. In addition to being a philosophical and social movement, I think antinatalism is also becoming its own art movement as well, gradually, um, with antinatalism being a fairly new and underexplored subject for artists to play with. Um, what is it about antinatalism that you feel to be uh, so inspiring? I find it inspiring because I believe that a great artist is someone who overturns a preconceived notion or existing values since the idea is fairly new and underexplored, as you say, it has a potential to change people widely. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Yeah, no, it's it's almost like this uh, this vast unexplored playground, you know, that hasn't mm. been explored in art. So it, it really does uh, lend itself to so many unique yeah. opportunities for sure. Um, all right, well, wonderful. Uh, thank you for all your, your answers to those questions. So now let's properly talk about all your film. Uh, again, the English title being about antinatalism. I want to uh, first off, thank you so much for sharing the film with me. I really enjoyed seeing it. I think it's I think it's a wonderful film, um, mm -hmm. and I was really honored to have the opportunity to see it and I really did truly enjoy it. Um, for those that have not yet been lucky enough to see the film, can you give our audience uh, like just a brief description of the plot of the movie? Uh, yes, uh, the film is about four university students, two girls and two boys. They take a class about antinatalism and after that uh, they face a suicidal desire and pregnancy and think about life and birth. Deeply. Yeah, in four very, uh, very, very meaningful and, and, and deep ways. Um, did the film have a release in Japan before its release in festivals in the United States? Uh, will it now have a broader release now that it's uh, been in festivals a little bit so far? Well, the screening in the United States was a world premiere. And currently, uh, we are waiting for results from other film festivals. Um, see, but since the film deals with a sensitive topic, sensitive thing, it is not easy to get a public screening chance without being accepted by festivals. So mm -hmm. we are just kind of yeah, waiting. Yeah, I know that problem very well myself. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. this film absolutely deserves to be in more festivals. So I hope that you'll receive good mm -hmm. news uh, sooner rather than later. So yeah, that's wonderful. Um, the film has quite a few titles and I was just curious as, as to why that decision was made. Like, you know, I, I thought it was interesting that the, um, mm -hmm. 
about antinatalism is the English title, but it's not a, unless I'm mistaken, it's not a direct translation of the meaning right. of the of the Japanese title. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The original Japanese title was just a exact translation of English title, but uh, after a while, I thought it is better to change at least uh, Japanese title in order to well, in order to get more audience. Maybe some people have kind of allergy just to the word antinatalism. So yeah. you know, I, for, I, for, I can imagine that it 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 would it has the possibility of both helping and and mm -hmm. making it more difficult because on one hand yes people do have like an allergy as, as i think no. you said to 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 this word or this concept mm. but it also fascinates people yeah you know right. you know much much like the characters of your movie like it does draw people in so mm. i imagine that it you know doing the very brave move i have to say of putting the word in the title um may may end up really helping the film uh, and i hope it mm. does um there's a sense in the movie that all the characters are tortured by antinatalism mm -hmm. in different ways. Um, that one lecture <laughs> that they all sit in on, you know, changes everyone's life. It throws everyone in the film into some kind of crisis. Um, and, and by crisis, I mean, it can be very positive for some of the characters. It can be very negative mm -hmm. for some of the characters. Do you think that antinatalism is a, is a dangerous idea? Was that a, was that a point that you were trying to make in the film? Well, I don't think antinatalism is a dangerous idea, but I think it's always kind of torturing for everyone to introduce themselves a um, new way of thinking in general, because they have to negate their older beliefs. Yeah, and, and antinatalism has a way, I think, of throwing one's entire set of beliefs into kind of a, a, a tailspin. You know, it, mm. it, it shakes everything up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rio is a really interesting character. Um, I was fascinating mm. how I went in and out of feeling really bad for him and then also sometimes disliking him. Um, I, I, I would love it if you could tell me about how you develop this character and, you know, explain some of the changes he, he goes through throughout the film. Okay. Um, after the philosophy class, he was a kind of lost in his life. So I tried, I tried my best to being lost together with him. So we improvise some lines together. Um, I wrote only a least necessary amount of lines for him and me. Hopefully audiences can share the lost and eventually find their own answer about the life. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Actually, it's fascinating that to know now that some of the lines were were um, improvised. That that makes a yeah. lot of sense, and that that is a really interesting way of I think uh, to know to, a piece of information about how you you built this character. I I, di I didn't write a question about this. I apologize, but I just want to make, make a little quick note that I thought it was really interesting in the beginning mm -hmm. of the film. He kind of already is playing with antinatalism based yeah. on his own feelings towards his father. But then the the class kind of um, puts those feelings into more of a philosophical context right. for him. And I thought that I think that's very true of a lot of people is that they they sort yeah. of have these feelings their whole life and then they discover there's a word for this, <laughs> you know. And it's 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 a, yeah that was an interesting thing to have really captured. I think um, outside of Schopenhauer, whose book at one point we see Rio uh, reading, there really uh, aren't any references to like real antinatalist thinkers anywhere else in the film, unless I've missed them. Uh, may I ask why this choice was made? Uh, yes, I didn't mention other antinatalist thinkers because I didn't want the film to be um, index of other, their quotes. Gathering their quotes is something what historians do, I think. Uh, but I wanted the film to be atmospheric. Yeah, I think that was really wise, absolutely. In addition to being a movie about antinatalism, this is also really rather a st uh, stunning film about the right to die, which I really wasn't expecting. Um, you know, though many antinatalists are also passionate right to die activists, myself included, mm -hmm. combining the subject of antinatalism and suicide or the right to die is very controversial to say the least. Um, I'd love to know more about, you know, how you feel these two subjects are connected. Okay. Uh, the the desire to commit suicide is usually a result of great depression or suffer. 
So I think antinatalists consider people with a suicidal desire as a victims of birth givers. And so antinatalists claim they are right to die in order to help them, I think. Do you think that antinatalism has the potential to make people suicidal? Was that you know consciously something you were trying to say about antinatalism in the film? Uh, yes, because antinatalism can be taken as a teaching to decrease number of humans, but the potential is not exceptionally big compared to many other life threats, I think. Right, right. Okay, thank you. Um, the suicidal character in question is Kana, Ryu's girlfriend. Um, I wanted to point out that the whole the whole sequence in which Kana, you know, films a video for her mother, even saying, you know, that she was happy to have been born her daughter, and how the mother knows what she's about to do, and how the mother finds, you know, that that bloody tissue in the in the in the drawer, you know, from her cutting herself. Um, all of it, that whole sequence was just so powerful. Um, you know, some of the, mo I mean, some of the most powerful uh, scene, in, like in, in a film I've ever seen, you know, that related to the right to die. Um, I, and I think some of the, you know, most powerful parts of the whole movie, in my opinion. Um, at first, Kana said she was happy to be born as her mother's child. That is because she actually thinks so. It's not something she's saying to make her mother happy. Um, she was just being honest. But at the same time, she also have a suicidal desire. So um, what I wanted to show was that her philosophical beliefs and her personal feelings don't always match. Humans are very complex animals, and they can still like something while, some, while knowing that something is wrong. And about the tissue, her mother knew what she was going to do because Kana had to do some paperwork to achieve her goal, like to suicide. Yeah. To get a suicide assist. Okay, about the tissue. Okay, why her mother found the body tissue is something I want to keep as a question. It may give a room to audiences to think about their relation with their parents, I hope. I absolutely think it does, and I, and once again, I think that you you showed that complexity, you, you know, of the entire relationship, it, it really astoundingly. It was an amazing sequence. Um, would you say that finding the subject of antinatalism gave the character of Kana a kind of like license to end her life? That it gave her, you know, a kind of permission to be open about it and to go through with it. Uh, you can interpret that way, but I would say no doesn't give her a license because she thinks she can do whatever she wants with her own life, even without the license, because it's harsh. The life is harsh. However, at the same time, she feels pity for her mother being left alone. Right, right. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, the place that Kana goes in order to end her life, was this a, a reference to Dignitas? Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be Dignitas. But some article about the uh, about uh, the unit has helped me a lot to write a script. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I definitely, I could definitely see, you know, where where it could have could have been an influence uh, yeah. in that part of the movie. Um, does Kana actually kill herself? I mean, I, I got the sense that she does, but um, the Kana that we see, I got the sense that the Kana we see at the end of the film is an illusion. Uh, though perhaps I'm wrong. Well. That is something I want to make ambiguous. More than fair, more than fair, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I was a bit surprised and confused regarding uh, Rio's final paper on the subject of antinatalism towards the end of the film. Why does he lie about what his true feelings are regarding antinatalism? Why was he trying to put on uh, like a positive spin on his opinions of life uh, to not upset his classmates or is this his real final conclusion? Um, it wasn't actually a lie, but I wanted to show that his opinion about antinatalism is not always consistent, depending on the um, standpoint or point of view he takes. Um, he can take the life positively when considering himself as a member of entire human species, but he can take it negatively also when considering himself as an individual man. Okay, I say, yeah, thank you for your insight into that. Um, 
I know you might not want to discuss the ending and that's perfectly fair, but I can't help but ask at the end of the film, Ryu has a conversation on the phone with his father who informs Ryu mm. that there's been some kind of act of terrorism at the school. Can you give me any insight about what happened? Did, did Ryu do something bad? Well, actually I can't because this is a scene where people have very different interpretation and I actually enjoy it. I believe that artwork cannot be completed without interpretation by audiences. So probably this scene is still work in progress. Okay, again, more than fair. Did the actors find the subject matter troubling? Was it difficult to direct them through um, some of these very controversial ideas? Oh, that was what I expected, but the actors were thankfully very understanding. Rather than that, it was kind of hard to make the film not to look like a criticism of life and birth. So we really have to be careful to our lines, our choices. Yeah, absolutely. I imagine it was a, a delicate tightrope. Did you face any pushback or controversy for any of the, the movie's subject matter at all? Um, yes, my crew showed a strip to someone with a power in the industry, and he said it might be hard to make it as a commercialized film with actual wide distribution. So I gave up looking for a film found at the very early stage of production. That's really unfortunate. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess, I guess it's, uh, it's what's to be expected, you know, given that this is such mm -hmm. a controversial idea and given that it's so it's, you know, there's still not that much work out there, you know, mm -hmm. for people to reference that um, this is just sort of the growing pains of, of moving it into the popular consciousness. Um, what do you most hope that people come away from the film understanding both about antinatalism and the right to die after watching the film? Well, Many people are surrounded with positive images of life and birth. Many media shows positive images of life and birth. Um, those images disable them, disable people to think about the life and birth neutrally. So I hope that the film regain people a uh, neutral point of view about the life and birth. Yeah, absolutely. I'm quite certain that more antinatalists and others are going to want to see this movie. Um, in what ways can we expect that the film will become available for viewers in the future? Oh, like I said earlier, I'm submitting the film to many film festivals and also film markets to attract distributors. So hopefully they can show you online or at the theater in case they are not interested. I will rent a theater by myself and upload it on some platform, online platform later. Also, if you're an industry person and interested in it, please shoot me a message via Twitter. Awesome. Well, I hope somebody gets in touch with you and makes that magic happen for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the film recently won an amazing prize at the uh, World Fest Houston International Film Festival. Congratulations to you and all involved. Uh, can we expect to see the film make an appearance in more film festivals to come? Well, we'll see. I hope so. I hope so too. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, Wataro, do you think that the subject of antinatalism will remain an important part of your work moving forward? Well, not sure about my future projects, uh, but definitely antinatalism is something that doesn't easily go away from me because I have, um, I have had this idea over 10 years. So probably it is possible that I imply the idea unconsciously on my future projects. That's exciting. I, I look forward to all your future works. Where can people find more of your work uh, and how can your audience best support you? I am submitting my older works to some online platforms. So they'll be available when they accept them and I will announce them. The best way to support me is to spread the fact that there is a film like mine about antinatalism. Um, this is what you can do for me for now. Um, in case I will have a hard time finding distribution, I may rent a crowdfunding to earn a theater rental fee, so you can support me there too. 
Great. Excellent. Well, if you do end up doing a crowdfunding, I'm, I'm happy to do anything I can to help promote that. Uh, I'm right. sure I, I'm absolutely I'm sure a lot of antinatalists would love to help us uh, support that any way they can. Uh, so everybody, please look out for opportunities to see the film. Rotaro, I truly did enjoy it so much. I really loved it. Uh, once again, I feel it's such a historical milestone uh, and touches on so many uh, important points. Um, again, again, I just want to make another note to say I, th I think it really is one of the best right to die films I've ever seen in addition to being a film about antinatalism and so that's a huge achievement congratulations on that well done to you and your crew all the actors everybody involved so well produced so well acted um absolutely you know to any distributor that might be looking this film absolutely does deserve a wider audience so please make that happen uh thank you for your work and thank you so much for being my guest today on the exploring antinatalism podcast yeah thank you very much Please follow the links below to see the full film trailer and to follow Wataru Shibata on Twitter. Thank you for listening to the Exploring Antinatalism podcast. This has been Amanda Oldfan Sukunik. You can find me on the YouTube channel Antinatal Wolf. Keep up with my daily antinatalist news updates at Antinatal News on Twitter. Please follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Amazon.com, RSS Feed, and so many other platforms. Email me at exploringantinatalism at gmail.com. The podcast website, www.exploringantinatalism.com, was designed by the amazing Visions Noirs. Please follow him at www.bionoir.com and also follow him on Instagram. Logo art by the amazing Life Sucks. Subscribe to him on YouTube and check out his merch at www.etsy.com slash shop slash Life Sucks Publishing. Music by the wonderful I Doubt It. Subscribe to him on YouTube. And check out our collaborative project along with our friend Ethel WV, The Right to No Longer Exist, which includes the podcast, The Right to No Longer Exist, A Right to Die podcast. All the best and bye for now. Starting May 15th, Antinatalism International will be hosting a fundraiser through Indiegogo to help raise funds for a Spanish to English translation of Miguel Steiner's antinatalist novel, El Antinatalista. Miguel Steiner is a fantastic yet highly underappreciated antinatalist, in large part due to the fact that at this time, none of his antinatalist works are yet available in English. With the help of antinatalist translator Alfonso Satariza, we believe that both antinatalist and non antinatalist readers alike will benefit greatly from El Antinatalista by Miguel. Miguel Steiner becoming more widely available to English-speaking audiences. If you would like to help us achieve our goals of having El Antinatalista translated into English, please follow the link below to our Indiegogo page, where you can watch our pitch video to learn more, check out our awesome perks and rewards for backing us, and also make sure to head to the Antinatalism International blog, where you can read the first chapter of El Antinatalista, already translated into English by Alfonso Satariza, for free! Thank you so much to anybody considering donating to this project, and here's hoping to seeing a fully translated English edition of El Antenatalista soon.